Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our devotion today. Uh, we are looking at a wonderful passage in Galatians chapter 6, and I want to read from verse 4 through to verse 10. In fact, let's read from verse 2. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone, without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one should carry their own load. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word should share all good things with their instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. May God bless that passage to us today. Today our theme is relentless in doing good. Paul exalts us to not to become weary in doing good. And the fact is, you know, when we are faced with so much injustice and so much evil out there in the world, we can easily become weary in doing good. We can wonder whether anything that we do can really make a difference. We become overwhelmed with the need around us and the insignificance of our efforts to address so many of these needs. Paul told the Thessalonians in chapter 3 and here in uh, Galatia chapter 6 that they should not grow weary in doing good and he then added this promise to the Galatians for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. The key for me is that little phrase, do not give up, if we do not give up, because so often we do give up. Someone who never gave up was John Wesley. In the last letter he wrote before his death, he wrote to William Wilberforce, who himself had come to faith through the influence of the Methodist revival and spent, as you know, most of his life uh, fighting for the abolition of slavery. And Wesley wrote these words to him. Unless God has raised you up for this very thing, you will be worn out by your opposition. But if God be for you, who can be against you? Are all of them stronger than God? Oh, be not weary of well-doing. Go on in the name of God and in the power of his might, till even... American slavery, the vilest that ever saw the sun, shall vanish away before it. Wesley too was relentless in challenging various institutional injustices of his day, particularly you know, economic inequality that resulted in poverty, starvation, slavery and war. James Harnish talks of how Wesley called the early Methodists to an inner transformation of the heart that expressed itself in both personal and systemic change. He saw the way the economic, political and social structures of his time were participants in the problem and could actually become part of the solution. So for example, in confronting widespread starvation among the lower classes, he called for grain to be used in the production of bread rather than being distilled for gin. The issues we face today are no different to what Wesley faced in his day. It's hard to believe that several centuries later we're dealing with exactly the same things. Economic injustice continues, resulting in an epidemic of obesity in some parts of the world and massive starvation in others. Although slavery was abolished in most parts of the world, we still know that racial prejudice and discrimination exists resulting in hatred and violence, which, of course, we are not unfamiliar with in our own country. There are wars between nations, 
which we know have caused the, the death and the maiming of countless thousands of innocent victims, no more so than right now in the conflict between Russia and the Ukraine. And if you add to that all the, the destruction that results as a result of pollution and global warming and so on, all of these are injustices, all of these are the issues that we face in our world today. <clears throat> I think Paul's words before this exhortation are, are very apt. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. mocked. A man reaps what he sows. <coughs> Excuse me. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. This law is as universal as the law of gravity. We reap what we sow. And sadly, much of the injustice and suffering in our world is because so many have sought to meet their own selfish needs at the expense of others. And this has led to the destruction Paul is talking about. Whereas those who, who please the Spirit, he says, reap eternal life. Many years ago, I think it was Bill Hybels, who coined the phrase divine discontent. He spoke about that discontent that is in your heart for some of the, the, the evils that are out there, the injustices that are out there, where you can't stand it anymore and you need to do something about whatever that injustice is. And so that is something that we need to search our hearts for and and ask the Lord to place that burden, that divine discontent within our hearts. We've spoken so much over the last number of weeks of Christian perfection in terms of, you know, personal holiness and personal transformation of the heart. But we have also tried to highlight the fact that it is also about systemic and institutional transformation. It's not just something that we we need to be praying for and, and seeking after personally. It's about how the transformed people of God participate in God's transformation of the world. The same spirit that made Wesley's heart strangely warmed is the spirit that planted was planted within the early Methodist uh, church uh, and gave them a, a passion for for human rights, for social justice, for peace. John Wesley sadly did not live long enough to see the end of the slave trade in England. But it was enough for him to know that he had made a vital contribution towards its abolition. And in the same way we can, we can make a vital contribution towards addressing so many of the evils and injustices in our world. We may not always see the fruit of our labor, but we know from what Paul says that at the right time, the proper time, a harvest will be realized only if we do not give up. And so I pray that we will, we will consider what those, those evils are, what those issues are towards which we can, we can make a contribution, that we can address to, to make a difference in terms of eradicating them from our society. And so as we close, just a few things to reflect on. Paul tells us not to grow weary in doing good. And I want you just to, to reflect on a time when you did become weary in doing good. And what exactly was it that, that caused you to, to grow weary? Secondly, environmental destruction, violence, war, child abuse, hunger, human trafficking, discrimination, inequality, poverty, are just some of so many evils that we encounter in our world today. What is your greatest divine discontent? What, what really uh, kind of makes your blood boil? What is that that you, you believe you could, you could give your life to, to, to changing if you had the time and you had the will? And then thirdly, if you were to write a letter of encouragement to someone like Wesley did to Wilberforce, someone who was seeking to bring about change in the world today, to whom would you write and why?
And then lastly, what, what cause is so important to you that you would be willing to invest yourself in it, even if you do not see the goal accomplished in your lifetime? In other words, what is that divine discontent? And so on that note, I want you to really think about those questions. It's so easy for us to gloss over these questions, but they really cause us to engage with, uh, I believe, what God is saying to us at this time, how we can make a difference as the transformed people of God. And so let's turn to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Lord, often I become disillusioned and, and weary of all the evil and injustice in our world, and I'm close to giving up. Sometimes I'm just so preoccupied with other things in my life, often at the expense of doing good. May your spirit stir up in me a divine discontent that drives me to face and to act against the injustices that I know grieve your heart. Give me the power by your spirit to do what you call me to do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Bless you all. Uh, hope to see you again in our Holy Week services for the rest of the week. And of course, Good Friday uh, at 9 o'clock. And also Resurrection Sunday, the sunrise service at 6. And then again at 9 o'clock. God bless you and may God continue to to just give us a vision of the cross as we journey through this, this Passion Week. God bless you all.